Family Theater presents Lisbeth Scott, John Payne, and Bonita Granville. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Promise, starring John Payne and Bonita Granville. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Lisbeth Scott. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Promise, starring John Payne as Pat and Benita Granville as Alicia. It was the quiet after the storm. We'd said every mean word we knew, every hateful, mean word. There wasn't any more to say. I was dragged. There's nothing left, is there, Pat? I remember when just to be with you like this, driving somewhere was enough. Let's skip it, huh, till we get home. You're tired and I'm sore. No matter what we say, we'll only keep hurting one another. All right, but it's all over between us and we both know it. I think... Please don't drive so fast. I'd like to get there in one piece. Okay, okay. You want to be in Frisco in the morning, don't you? The road's sopping, and you can barely see through the windshield. One mistake and Talk we'll be... about mistakes. This whole trip was a mistake. I thought I'd drive to Salt Lake City for the special broadcast, and, well, that on the way back, I'd get some time to talk with you alone. Time to patch up differences. Time to say the words I, I want to say like I used to say them. Nothing you've said so far sounded very reminiscent to me. That's because the words get all tangled up and come out pure poison. Do they? You know they do. Look, Alicia, for six months I've been trying to get up courage to ask you this question. Is there anyone else? No. There never could be. What is it you want, then? Success. I'm sold on success, Pat. I want to be somebody with a capital S. A radio personality as important as Joe Stafford or Dinah Shore. Tops. I see. And do you think you can climb faster alone? Is that it? That's it. All right. You can divorce me if you like. I won't stand in your way. But you might have waited another week before you told me. <laughs> At least till after Christmas. Let's leave the holly and mistletoe out of it, shall we? Sure, sure. Let's be realistic. Let's be modern. Kick Senna in the teeth. Well, that way it's easier. And if you ask me, a lot more civilized. And it'd be easier on my nerves right now if you slowed down. We're coming to Snow Creek Bridge. It's right after this turn. I know the road. Pat, there's a car coming. All right, I see it. It's on the wrong side. Pat, look out! Shut up! Oh, the wheel, Pat. We're skidding toward the road. Here, see if you can stand. Oh, oh. Oh, that's, that's good. There. Oh, take it easy, darling. Lucky thing I could open that door. Pat. Pat, are you all right? Oh, forget it. It's you I'm... Look out, she's starting to slide. Oh, Pat. Pat, the car. It's in the river down there. Oh, forget the car. I've still got you. Oh, wait, I take that back. I'd forgotten. Come on, let's get off this muddy slope and back to the road. Grab those bushes. They'll help us climb. Alicia, wait. I think I see a light down the canyon. Are you sure? Look, see it? There it is again. You wait here. I'll go down and see. And freeze to death? I'll go with you. All right, give me a hand. It's a bad slope. Here. This way. There it 
is all right. Is, is that a house? It certainly is. There's the light there in the window. <laughs> Looks like a traveler's beacon. But the house is like a, an overgrown doll's house, only built of stone. And, and the funny little fence. Oh, oh Pat, I'm frightened. Oh, don't be. Let's, let's go in. There's a gate. Oh, here it is. Uh-oh. Dogs. Pat, who, who's that? Don't be afraid of the dogs. They mean no harm. Welcome. Oh, hello. My name is Adams. This is my wife, Alicia. Hello. A hit-run driver knocked us off the bridge. I know. I heard the crash. I've been expecting you both. Come in. The white-haired old man held an oil lamp above his head, leading the way. He was very old, but his face was gentle and kindly, but strange. Well, the room was pleasant enough, arranged as a company were expected. A cheery log fire burned on the wide hearth. I'll get you coffee. You mustn't go to any trouble. If we can just sit here until morning. I always make coffee for them. It's very comforting. Take off your coats. Hang them here by the fire to dry. The first time I had a good look at our clothes, what I saw astonished me. The sleeves of my jacket were slashed from shoulder to wrist. Alicia's shirt was ripped, her stockings and ribbons, her coat torn across the back between the shoulders. I looked at my jacket. It was a big, jagged tear right over the heart. I don't understand. We're not scratched, either of us. They never understand at first. They go on thinking they're alive. Huh? What? I try to tell them, but they won't believe me. Well, we're alive. You can see for yourself. Wait here by the fire. I get some goat's milk for you. I keep it fresh and cold in the creek. Pat, he thinks we're dead. Yeah, I know. Oh, he's a little crazy, I guess. Oh, just for a minute, I... I couldn't help thinking we might be... Oh, nonsense. Well, if we are, it would be sort of wonderful, wouldn't it? No pain or anything, and, and being here. When I was a kid, I, I had a storybook. There was a picture in it I've never forgotten. A room like this. Pat. Yeah? Kiss me. See if I feel it. <laughs> We're strangers, remember? Hey, you know, I bet that old man built this place himself, stone by stone. Look how solid it is, rooted deep like a tree. Hmm. Why can't all houses feel like this? It is solid, isn't it? You know what? This place stirs up my imagination. I could work here. Why, that book of mine will write itself. Alicia. Yes, Pat? Suppose I could talk the old man into renting us this place. Oh, oh not for long, a year perhaps. I've got a thousand in the bank. We could toss our jobs over the moon and really live here. Would you do it? Would you be happy? I'd be bored to death. Yeah. Why do you ask? To make me seem selfish? He's back. I've brought the milk and a crock of cheese. Oh, you're so kind. And we're complete strangers. No, you're guests. My name is Peter Forner. I came from Switzerland when my young wife died. I couldn't bear to be near the scenes familiar to us. I roamed all over the world. When I discovered this canyon beneath Snow Creek Bridge, I knew I'd come home again. It's so peaceful, except when there's an accident, like tonight. Have there been many? Twenty persons have lost their lives on that bridge. Uh, Twenty-two, counting tonight. They've all come here. I remember the first two. A middle-aged farmer and his wife from Kansas. And they were frightened like lost children. How long did they stay? A few hours. In the morning, I asked them what they wanted to do. They said they hoped to go to heaven. Well, what did you do? I asked myself, where is heaven? I'd never given much thought to things, but I supposed it was up in the sky. What then? 
I cut them some staves and carved their names on them. Beth and Joel Burnett, I remember them well. It was March the 10th, 1920. What happened? I led them as far as I could to the summit of Old Whiteface. That's 6,000 feet. They thanked me, said goodbye, and went on. I stood in the snow watching them for some time. And they seemed to climb a trail of light up and up until I could see them no more. Yeah, well, I hope they made it all right. They always do. There have been many, you say? Many. Men, women, and children. The children were always afraid until... Until what? Someone always came down the trail to meet the children. I'm taking the milk and cheese back to the creek. Would you like to come with me, son? Hmm? Oh, yes, I would. Here, let me take that crock. Be careful, son. The trail is narrow. But there aren't any obstructions. I've worn it smooth with my comings and goings. I'll just follow you. Hey, what's that? Oh, don't be frightened. They are my creatures. Perhaps they think I've come to feed them again, but it's not time. But they come so close. Look at these deer. Oh, they're so close right now, I could touch them. I thought they could sense a stranger. It isn't that you're a stranger. What is it then? You are a spirit now. You weren't gone long, but the dishes are done. I've stacked them here near the cupboard. Is there any place we could sleep for a few hours? Perhaps till daybreak. There are no beds, but I'll bring some quilts. Here, I put them near the fire. Oh, I'm really tired. I'll just drift off, I know. Hmm. I must carve your staves as I did for all the others. I keep a supply of poles. One for Alicia first, then yours. How long will they take? They'll be ready when you awaken. Rest well. <laughs> I'll sleep the sleep of the dip. Uh, the just. I lay there with my eyes closed, but I didn't go to sleep right away. Scenes kept running through my mind like strips of a motion picture film, but backwards. Back to the time I first saw Alicia. I was in France. I was in the 47th Tank Battalion. She was a singer with a USO troop that came up to the front. She was so beautiful that my heart began playing hopscotch. And when she sang, well, I won her. It wasn't easy. Now it seemed so unreal. And now I was losing her. And that was unreal, too. And this old man, was he real, or was I just dreaming it? The accident and all. Maybe we were dead. Suddenly I heard myself screaming, Alicia! What is it, Pat? I... I... Uh, I guess I dozed off. Oh. I dreamed we were being buried in the same grave. Hey, where's that old man? He's outside. I heard him go out. Perhaps he's gone again to the creek. Look, he's finished the staves. They're lying there all ready for us. Let's get out of here fast. It's too spooky. But, Pat... Now don't stop to argue with me. Here's your coat. No, Pat. We can't go. What can we tell Peter? Well, tell him he's mistaken and thanks, but we've got to get back to our jobs. Oh, you're up already. Good. It is time for you to start your journey. Are you ready? What? Oh. Well... Yes, we're ready. Here are your staves. I've marked your names. I see. Thank you. You've gone to so much work. I will come with you, a part of the distance. It is a beautiful morning. Come.
I, I hope my breath holds out. That was some climb. How much farther? There is White Face. If you climb the west flank, you will have no trouble. You should reach the summit before nightfall. You're coming with us, of course. No. I am an old man. My heart is old and rusty and tired. Then, it, then it's goodbye. Only for a little while. I'll be coming along myself on Christmas Eve. Oh, no. Surely you are mistaken. Oh, no, my friends, I am not mistaken. I wonder if you would do something for me. Well, well, anything I can, of course. Would you be willing to speak to God in my behalf? But we'll... Explain to him that I am old and tired, that I did not sell many of my carvings in the town this year. Now, with the great storms coming, I do not have much feed in my sheds for my wild creatures. On Christmas Eve, I myself must climb the mountain. Tell him this. I will be gone and my sheds will be empty. He will understand. He will send someone to take my place. I have no doubt. No doubt at all. We'll deliver your message. Yes, Peter. We promise. Thank you. Thank you both. Now I must go down again. God speed you. We'll be seeing you then. On Christmas Eve. And that's a promise, too. We watched him go slowly down until the turn of the mountain carried him from sight. Finally, Alicia broke the silence. What a wonderful old man. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. We lied to him. Did we? Oh, Pat, you didn't really fall for that nonsense. You did. Maybe for a minute. He was so sure. But, but in this day and age, for a moment I, I forgot to think straight. What came over us? I don't know about you, but I'm going to the top of that mountain. Pat Adams, you... Oh, now who thinks we're dead? I do. We couldn't be. Why, I, I feel so alive. Don't you like being alive? I do. I can think of a thousand reasons why, particularly now. Name them. Oh, uh, music and coffee, high hot baths, hats and spring, flying, and you. On the level? Uh-huh. Then come over here and kiss me. Oh, maybe this had to happen to put us straight with ourselves. If I were alone, I'd keep my promise to Peter. I'd go on. I want life. It's wonderful. Okay. Let's just see how wonderful it is. I'm Officer Webster, State Highway Patrol. That your pleated accordion down in the river? <laughs> he can see us. Yeah, so he can. Look, mate, is that your crumpled car down in the river? How did you guess? Well, look at your clothes. What happened? Hit and run, driver. Why didn't you report it? Where you been? We've been dead. What? Oh, oh I get it. You've been at Peter Furner's down there in the canyon. You know him? Of course. Say, so what about him? A little peculiar, isn't he? Is he? Claims he sees ghosts of people killed on this bridge. He's harmless, though. From the looks of that car down there, you barely escaped being ghosts at that. I guess you're right. Yeah, uh, you got a license? Well, I haven't lost it. No, here it is. Patrick Adams, San Francisco. Who's the lady? My wife, Alicia. I'm Alicia Adams. Alicia Adams. You must be the gal that sings on the radio. I am. And I've got to sing from San Francisco this very afternoon. Could you possibly get us there? Well, for you, lady, anything is possible. Well, I'm one of your fans. That cop was as good as his word. He flagged down a bus. In San Francisco, we changed to a taxi and headed toward the studio. Hurry, Miss Adams, you're on the air. In 40 seconds, I'm on the air. Alicia, wait. I've got to know something. I'm on the air. Let me go. No, no. You've got to tell me now. You fool. I've got to go in. Answer me, Alicia. Do you still want the divorce? Yes. Yes, I do. That was the split up. 
At least he didn't come home. Instead, she phoned. Pat, I'm not coming home. It was wonderful while it lasted, but I... I guess I'm just not cut out to be a wife. <laughs> And then she was gone. I read later in the trade paper she'd gone east. Television, I guess. <laughs> she certainly had the looks for it. Can I have another of the same? Look, Pat, this is a filling station, but I think your tank's about level. What's the matter? My money any good? Sure, Pat, but you can't drown nothing big in one of them little glasses. All right, get a big glass, then. Nah, Pat, nah, use the old bean. You don't want to be fogged up with Christmas coming? Hmm? Christmas? Yeah. Tomorrow night's Christmas Eve. Yeah. Hey, Fred. Yeah? Do you believe in anything? Sure, I believe in lots of things. Now, 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 get this. There's a mountain, see? Yeah? You can't see it, can you? No. But if I can make you believe it's there... It is, see? It is? You don't get it? Get what? I'm talking about faith. Faith is coming up for a test pretty soon. How is that? Well, the scientists are working on it. Final test of faith, bigger than the atom bomb. You better watch out, Fred. You better have faith, or else. You got it? Mm, sure, I got it. All mountain full of it. I wasn't making much sense. He got me in a cab later, and the cabbie put me to bed. Next morning, my head was the mountain, but after breakfast, I felt better. I saw in the papers there was a blizzard in the Sierras. It made me think of old Peter Fawner. He said the storms would be heavy. Maybe I could be of some use up there. I went to a neighborhood garage and rented a car. It was a long, lonely drive. Rough going in many spots, but I made it. I crossed Snow Creek Bridge and found a place to park on the other side. The trail down to Peter's was choked with snow, but I started down anyway. Old Peter's place was twice as pretty in a setting of snow. I was ringed around with animal tracks. And then I noticed there was only a faint wisp of smoke from the chimney. Barely a trace. Peter's beacon was out, too. I shouted, Hey, Peter! Peter Fawner! I called again, but there was no reply, so I went on in. Dogs didn't growl much. They were at his feet. Hey, Peter, wake up. Aren't you going to welcome me? Then I noticed the staff leaning against the fireplace. It was beautifully finished, and the name was carved in. Peter Fawner. I went back and touched his folded hands, and they were cold. I lit the beacon and then went out the door. Just then, I saw a flicker of light coming down the trail... And I waited. Pat? Pat? Is that you? Alicia. I thought you'd be here. I had to come. I couldn't stop thinking of him. Is he all right? He's dead, Alicia. Oh, Pat. He did know, didn't he? That he'd go on Christmas Eve. And look, isn't his staff beautiful there by the fireplace? Uh-huh. You'll think I'm silly. This morning I went to church and prayed. I prayed what he asked us to say. Please send someone to care for Peter Fawner's creatures. Pat. Yes, darling. We've been sent, don't you see? I did get through, I was heard. We're here. I'm going to stay here all winter. I am too. Oh, Pat. Can I give myself back to you as a Christmas present? With all my love. <laughs> You're the only Christmas present I want. Ever. We got our second chance, didn't we? To be together. To make our marriage work. It will, darling. It will. Alicia? Hmm? Look. What, Pat? Peter's staff was over there by the fireplace. It's gone.
this is Elizabeth Scott again. For centuries, many thousands of good-hearted people have been working toward that great and honorable goal, the Brotherhood of Man. It would be a wonderful accomplishment, a state of human relations in which all human beings treat each other as brothers and sisters. The real Brotherhood of Man would mean an end of war, a minimum of deprivation throughout the world, an upsurge in the benevolent sciences, and a host of other wonderful benefits. It would really be a magnificent achievement for the human race. But it will never be achieved by any purely human plan. The Brotherhood of Man can never be anything more than an impossible dream until we first acknowledge that its success depends on our acceptance of the fatherhood of God. A brotherhood of man based on the fatherhood of God would be good and lasting, and it is possible. Prayer is the means through which it might be accomplished. Through prayer, we acknowledge our dependence on our Heavenly Father. Through prayer, we can turn seemingly impossible dreams into actuality. And when you pray, Pray together as a family, and you'll be strengthening the bonds of kinship in your own home as well. For the pa- family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Promise, starring John Payne and Bonita Granville. Elizabeth Scott was your hostess. Others in the cast were Norman Field, Tudor Owen, and Leo Cleary. This radio adaptation of Mildred Cram's beloved story was by James Roach. Music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and the production was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present Walter Brennan and Gigi Perot in the Land of Sunshine. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.